This is the Movement 101 Podcast. Damien Brown, welcome back, sir. How are you getting on? It's good to be back, Brian. I'm very well. How are you keeping? I am keeping very well. Our last uh, episode, we talked about your prep for Everest, and this is still in the past. You're, you're, you haven't gone yet, but you are still prepping and getting ready. And still, the things that we we spoke about in the first episode, which people will have already listened to, um, are still up in the air. But when they listen to this, please God, you are, okay, well, up in the mountain, and you are preparing to climb. Or, well, well, what would it be? We'll just say. So if this gets out when we're talking right now. In about four or five weeks' time. So four or five weeks' time from now, you're on base camp? Yeah, probably. That'll be the middle of April, right? So, um, yeah, probably around base camp. Like, I think it takes uh, 13 days. So there's a few little things before that that are unknown. Like, currently there's a seven-day soft quarantine in Nepal, but people are saying it. It could well go before the climbers get there for the season, so that might push things back. But yeah, be around base camp or coming up to base camp or ready, getting ready to settle in there for six uh, weeks. Like with that, because I was on base camp and when I was there, no one was there because people went obviously climbing uh, up to Everest. It's a hub of activity. It's like a little village. There'll be hundreds of climbers there. What I'm hearing is this year, um, it's like a sixty percent drop, drop in what the numbers have been over the obviously not last year but the years the previous years to that because well there's a lot of countries can't travel um but that'll still make around 200 climbers or so i think i'm not like i could be incorrect but i, I think and be, it, w- 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 that would include sherpas and all as well no i think that's just clients you know and then you all have right. then you have all the companies and their logistic teams and the sherpas and porters um so yeah i know as you said it, it well you know i haven't been there so but as you said what i know about it is it's a it's a little um it's a little village maybe even a town that's a town really um uh during this season and like do you envision then with that being a town that like you know, you're popping into tents you're getting to kind of build relationships with people you're having conversations uh, with like-minded people is, is that something that you you think you will be doing um i was just reading some of the stuff from my um operator you know the the person i'm potentially going with um and they're quite covid compliant so they've got like oh, okay a lot of um and I'm, I'm pretty sure every company will be now what the reality that looks like um but still there's no cases in the kubu region you know so um but yeah, no, it's it's basically the usual story. Like so, um, I, if I remember the list that they had kind of stated, it was like copious amounts of hand sanitizer, um, no handshaking, uh, no sharing food, um, masks or buffs will be worn a lot, I imagine, on the mountain, and uh, no kind of inter um, company, um, you know, inter operator kind of mixing because, yeah. I suppose they probably have to confide to, or com- they have to comply to some sort of um, regulations while we're there. Yeah, it's crazy. It's obviously going to be a different experience because of COVID and you do forget that once you're on the mountain, COVID still applies. So, well, look, I mean, like today we're going to detail responsibility and we've covered this both in terms of your very first episode and, you know, who you are as a person and what you've experienced throughout your life, but in rugby and now world adventure. And even in the last episode, we kind of detailed a little bit about it as well, but just off podcast there, we, we, we discussed the training for Telos responsibility and, and this being the necessary foundation for everything else. And even for us, uh, as uh, in terms of movement, responsibility is our very first uh, principle that we, we always discuss in terms of taking ownership of your body. Um, but just give us a little bit of why responsibility is the first principle, why that foundation is so important and why without it, I suppose everything else is so much more difficult to achieve it just it sets the attitude from the start like so everything you're ever going to achieve comes through your mind first um every thought um or it's in your thoughts where everything starts and in your visions right it's not exterior so it's if you i suppose an analogy around that would be like um somebody building a house like they don't just start 
right? They put together a plan <laughs> and they, um, they envision a plan and then they put that on paper and then they get started. Your mind is the exact same thing, right? Um, you have to see it and you have to, it starts in your mind. Um, and then um, everything goes from there. So um, taking responsibility for anything is like, I call it like it's the, it's the, there's a reason it's the number one step in the telos pathway or the telos mastery pathway. Because if you don't take responsibility, well, um, you will never master anything. You will be mastered. So it's um, it, simply put, it's about taking ownership for things and, and not looking um, outside of yourself, um, but owning that and being responsible for everything. So every everything that's within your control and even some things that aren't within your control and how you respond to those, that's your ability to respond. Um, so without that attitude, you are capping yourself from the start. Like you're never going to achieve anything, you know, um, anything worthwhile, anything meaningful for you. You're probably not even going, sorry, not, there's no probably here. You're not going to find any real meaning in life without um, making that decision. And that's all it is. Um, but it can be really hard to make that decision, you know, and often it comes off the back of um, circumstance, but it, it doesn't have to. But, you know, we, we see in life, you know, where people make big changes off the back of like extraordinary events, you know, sometimes painful and sometimes pleasurable. Um, but... Um, and, 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 you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and life will give us that sometimes to steer us in the right direction. And, and people listen to, you know, what they start seeing in their mind, first and foremost, when that happens. But, you know, um, somebody who is proactive can actually um, get there outside of those kind of extraordinary or extreme circumstances. But, yeah, I suppose the, to sum all that up, um, it responsibility sets the attitude from the start um, and that attitude is going to be the key in you realizing your potential as a human um, without that you'll always be looking externally um, and that's not where the answers are the answers are internally well you 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 already mentioned it there and i just have a jordan uh, peterson quote here that you've uh is part of tell us and it's like the more responsibility you take on, the more meaning your life has. Give us a little bit of background of why taking more responsibility gives you meaning for life. Well, you can take responsibility for just certain parts of your life and then you can abdicate other parts, right? So like there might be something really purposeful for you um, and you're like, you know, that's where you fix your focus and your attention and your awareness and that's where then therefore your energy flows you know uh, and other stuff can just pass you by um, in life and that can be um, in terms of fulfillment and meaning that can be um, what's the word I'm searching for it can it can mean that you know you don't ever become fulfilled because you're missing out really important parts of life so like the, the obvious kind of analogy with that is somebody who is like incredibly um career focused and achieves a lot in their career and it actually gives them a level of satisfaction you know because they've taken that responsibility and because of its value um it's pr purposeful meaning for them but there's a whole host of other areas that they haven't taken responsibility for so let's let's talk about family like and maybe that is something that they've kind of abdicated responsibility to their partner or to somebody else um and you know if you don't take meaning for that well you're not going or so if you don't take responsibility for that you know something that is important to us all because we're humans and we're um, connected that um you're missing a big part so that's kind of explaining the opposite to what Jordan Peterson said I think like that the more responsibility you take the more meaning and you should take responsibility for everything you know I uh, sorry you should you can take responsibility for everything that is um 
purposeful and, and important and um it's just finding those things and and uncovering them and um and that can be very challenging in the way we've kind of set up um society the way it's been engineered and manufactured um it's not uh exactly conducive to finding uh purpose and meaning fulfillment in life the so we, we've already discussed damien about uh, responsibility and it is something because y- you mentioned it there that it's, it's going to look different for everyone and i actually just want to use myself as the analogy uh both myself and my wife my wife is a stay-at-home mother it's something that she was literally born and put on this earth to do she's so sure of of always wanted to have a child of, of literally being there 24 7 of raising that child it's how i grew up uh myself my, my, my mom was around all the time uh and then me as a business owner i I, i'll happily go out to work i'll happily kind of build what what we're building uh but the shared values of of myself and my wife like it's like we're so sure of what we want but it doesn't make life necessarily easy because you i I think people when you talk about a responsibility it's tough work and i think what we're, we're often told is go and find your passion and it, that sounds very airy fairy, and it's like, no, no, this is tough work. Responsibility, finding what you actually do truly value, and getting to work every single day. Uh, it's a it's a step most people never even make. You know, it's like they skip it. Um, I have a saying, like I've said it before in the past, is that you don't want it to be easy. Um, And if you are on the right path, um, it won't be easy because you have kind of taken responsibility for your life. And that means that you are striving towards um, realizing your potential. And that's never going to be easy. There's going to be resistance all over the shop with that internally and externally but having taken that ownership of your life you will always find a way past those hurdles or resistance or whatever they may be so like internally you're not set up really um or we as a species are not really set up to um pursue all the time and push and push and push and push and and you know look for more because we are innately lazy you know our mind will do as much as it has to do to survive and our body will do as much as it has to do so that's obviously something that's going to hold us back responsibility but also c- c- can i just say as well I, I do think that that's a very important thing to realize because as you mentioned, that we are in, in, innately lazy as human beings and have been for millions of years. You want to do the most efficient thing possible to keep ourselves safe, make sure we're surviving. And it's a, it's a different life now. Modern modern life is different. So we are going to have that kickback, like you mentioned, internally and externally. Uh, so ha, as, you're, as you're just talking there, like, I mean, that resistance that comes up, is that that why, again, the system that you use and you have built and we're working on in terms of Telos, that's why that's so important. Yeah, it's 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 aligned, right? So there's clear steps in it. There's six clear steps, um, six broad headlines, and the first one is responsibility. And there's a reason that's the first one, like because I said it's that broad foundation, um, and it's that kind of four cornerstones of the foundation and the rest of the filling that we're going to build this house on, and this house is going to be our um life's work um and but without responsibility you know whatever we're building on is just going to fall down eventually you know we're never going to get to the house is never going to be our full potential as a, as a human if that analogy works for people so um so that's why i place it number one and that's what i've experienced you know um and um and and when i first kind of um took action on the responsibility which came from a, i think it weeks we talked about this before right but which came from pain um i um so when i first took action on responsibility which came from pain i started to like that 
action started to wire uh, my mind differently through the kind of pain and suffering of it. And I didn't know for years and years and years like that those first few steps were going to become like um, the life. They were basically life changing for me, you know, that decision and then the actions around it. Uh, And it's only like on reflection now, uh, well, over the last five or six years that I can put words around this. And now, like when I'm um, going through daily life and there is some sort of resistance, be it internally or externally, um, I can see, like, I can feel the importance of responsibility, like, and having taken it and where it came from. I can track it all the way back in my kind of life timeline to that 17 year old. And I like, so, um, like, that is the greatest gift I could have ever given myself. Not that I had a Scooby as I was doing that at the time, like, to articulate. I was just, I was driven by something that was really p- important to me and the pain around. Um, the thought of not achieving that and that just it set in stone I was like right well I am going to take responsibility for my in that in that case it was my general kind of level of fitness and I'll work away in it and you know and, and now looking back and and you know from time to time like I said um, it's f- so clear to me like the importance of that because I take responsibility for everything like I take it for my thoughts my emotions my reactions um, the way I think about things the way I perceive things, you know, so all those internal stuff and the way how I, act, you know, so, um, uh, and how I um, react to things that are outside my control. I take responsibility for everything. And when shit goes bad, I take responsibility for that too. And it's so valuable. It just brings the power back to you. It brings you this kind of sense of freedom, you know, because nobody else is controlling and you're in charge of your ship and, you know, um, because you have lived that way for a little while, um, you have great understanding of who you are because you've you've been the one questioning everything. You've been the one deciding on the actions to take. You've been the one re, um, analyzing that feedback and taking responsibility for it, be it um, negative or positive. You know, so sometimes obviously we hit dead ends all the time, but that's clear feedback. And then you're like, well, no, OK, I led myself down this path. Well, I'll take the responsibility to get myself out of it. And then you're back on a different path and then you're exploring there again. And then you find maybe you find a great path and you're like, yeah, I know straight away this is for me. I, you know, I'll continue doing this. And, and it's it's always responsibility. Um, it's always that ownership that um, is the is the leader. That's brilliant. Just as you were uh, talking there about responsibility and really taking that ownership yourself, it just brought me back to my situation as an entrepreneur, as a leader of a team, both full-time staff and part-time staff, and how if anyone makes a mistake in my team, it's my fault. And and and, and the I feel very empowered in that state, you know, because it's, I haven't communicated something really well. If something was a mistake, what did I do wrong? Why didn't that person understand what they had to do? And, you know, you can look around at all your team and go, what the hell are you doing? But ultimately, it is you good, bad, or indifferent. And I suppose anyone who is an entrepreneur listening to this kind of understands that we take all of the hardships and responsibility and you know and the heartache, but on the other side, please God, is that you do get the reward if you continue true, but we, Jesus, anyone who's an entrepreneur knows how difficult it is. But what I, I want to give people listen to this, Damien, because there's obviously a huge amount, as we mentioned, in terms of responsibility with Telos as a clear framework for members to focus on and work towards and work through. But I just want to talk about uh, imagination because that's one of the steps that you know is in in, in the process of uh, responsibility and just to give people an awareness because awareness is actually one of the other ones as well but imagination is to mentally create the end we desire giving direction and purpose to our beginnings and providing the substance of a written mission statement. This is something in Telos and something that I've done for years in terms of business both personally and, uh, and professionally. Imagination a lot of people don't understand that they do have the power to create the life they want through their imagination. Can you give us a bit more information about how we do that in Telos? In Telos, yeah, for sure. So we have um, two mastery exercises where um, imagination or whatever you, whatever term you want to use, whatever term you associate with how you create images in your mind visualization could be another one um that 
rely heavily on imagination um, because, as you just mentioned, it's, um, it's power in being able to create before um, we start, right? So um, we, want, we need to know where we're going. Like when you leave the house, you don't hop in the car and just drive around. You have a fucking destination every time or if you're going for a walk. You, you have, you've created in your mind, you've thought about where I'm going to walk to. You don't just go out and wander. Like It's, just, it's the same thing with our life, right? We need that destination. And we can, we can see that and feel that. That's really, really important part of um, imagination or visualization is feeling um, our way through what we're seeing in our mind's eye. Anyway, so we bring that back right to the two mastery exercises and actually we use it um, in the, the daily practice as well that we uh, integrate in um, the first month of responsibility. But on, a, on a, a powerful level, we use it for these two mastery exercises and there's two uh, and there's sorry, and they lead into each other. So the first one, we call it begin with the end in mind. So basically what we do is um, we go right to the end of our life and we use our imagination to create our funeral experience. And we, like in Telos, there's a, um, a lot of leading questions and a lot of um, uh, leading statements to bring people into that, to help them kind of unlock or help them fill in as much detail and color and emotion into the visualization because these things are all really important in connecting with how it feels right and that's what we want to hit on we want to hit on the the emotional side of it because um you know we are trying to give um the participants or the trainees a perspective on their life from the end backwards like who did you want to be what what was important to you? What values um, did you embody? What was your character? What was said by you? You know, what is your next door neighbor going to say about you um, at your funeral when he's having a conversation outside the church with another neighbor? Yeah. You know, and we want to go, we, we need that um, emotion to come out um, to bring out those things um, fleetingly you know, that are really important to us because those can be really hard to see, right? Because you're going through life, you're busy, people are busy, people maybe are even addicted to being busy. You know, nobody slows down, nobody's particularly patient anymore. Or, um, you know, it's it's not really part of the game. So our mind is always racing to the here and the now and the little um, um, tasks and the annoyances and, and, you know, we're reactionary to everything. But we 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 never take that opportunity like to think maybe well some people do but like you know i'm talking about the kind of the mass here the general population think about um five years from now ten years from now and and look what do i want to have achieved and i know you've said this to me a few times you think like this you know ten years from now uh five years from now well where do i want to be and what's this body of work i want to have achieved well let's go all the way to the end of our life right let's go to our fucking deathbed what have we achieved what have we contributed who were we what was our character and we do that through the power of imagination and we add in like i said through that our, our mind because everything starts in our mind first we add in detail we add in color we add in emotion uh, we use our five senses and build in as much um, of those things as we can and we recreate this experience uh, and we hope from that and I, I i'm sure you can say you can confirm this positively as i will that um, we see a very different perspective from the end back yeah, I, I completely agree because even, uh, and it's so important as you mentioned there, but that feeling because I've only realized this the last couple of years that I, I have uh, big visions. I've written them down for years, three year goals, five years goals, 10 year goals. And you realize if you listen to this now, like the money you want to earn, it's actually that feeling of say freedom that you want to feel, the body fat you want to drop is that feeling of confidence that you want to have, that beautiful car you want to drive is that feeling of power or whatever the hell that you, the feeling you want to get. So, it's not actually about the physicality thing that you're trying to achieve. It's that feeling. And that's what we're trying to embody when we vision our life, professional, personal, our values, the, per the, the man, the woman that we're trying to become. And that, that feeling, when you begin to sit with that, when you begin to understand what you really want and you begin to feel that, you actually begin to show up as that person. 
and that's what, this idea of kind of believe and you will achieve and all this kind of crack. It, I, I've talked about it previously on Dan's podcast, actually the primal podcast of McGregor and, you know, I am the champion. And it was kind of like seen as a bit of a joke that he would say this, but in, in reality, he was trying to embody the champion mindset. He was embodying this feeling, this confidence, this, I already have the belt. I don't need to feel, train, have the mindset of a champion. You know, I, I, I need the belt to have that. I have it now. I, I embody that now. I live that now. And everything you're talking about there is is 100% I would resonate with. And everything that I have in my own practice in terms of vision, everything in terms of telos, etc. that feeling, that embodiment, that person you want to become, you be that person now. And that's what this system is trying to provide. But I, I kind of want to quickly talk about just some of the laws. So we say there are uh, seven laws that we have written in terms of responsibility. And I, I just want to talk quickly about the law of cause and effect. Um, and I actually want to read this out. So if you can just bear with me for one second. The law of cause and effect. I just want to give us a bit of, go a little bit deeper after I just give a detail about it. So the, the law of cause and effect tells us that every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Every effect must have a cause, and in turn, that cause must have an effect. Whatever you send into the universe comes back. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. In accordance with this law, every effect you see in the physical or outside world has a very specific cause, which has origins in the internal or mental world. Your thoughts, your beliefs about yourself, about others, about the world, about life, your overall mental state set in motion specific causes that come to materialize over time as a corresponding effect in the other world. Therefore, to master your destiny, you must master your thinking because everything in your 3D reality is but a mental creation, a projection of your consciousness. It's heavy shit, huh? <laughs> I, it, it, but it's heavy shit in the sense of like, again, if we talk about responsibility, because this, if you were to read that off by The Secret and think positively, like that, 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 that's a real law, we'll say. But the responsibility, the work you have to do, is not easy. It's not just positive thinking that everything's going to be fine. But that, that, you embody that law of cause and effect. Fuck me, that is life-changing. Mm. Um, yeah, I... You know, I, I I see myself as an explorer and um, not just physically, but like internally. And I went on a bit of an exploration around these um, the the laws of the universe or these principles of life, you know. And when I read some of them, uh, some of them are really big, like and it's hard to build an association with them straight away. They um because everyone would describe them a bit differently. And I read quite a lot about them and, and some resonated a little bit deeper, but that one was, you know, the cause and effect one was uh, very kind of innate to me, I want to say. Like, I was like, yeah, no, yeah, no, I, I mean, I see that every day, like, or I feel that every day. Um, and I, um, I, I do my best to embody that. And, and that's why these are in there. You know, we're trying to give people as much information for them to build out their 3D uh, reality, you know, or sorry, their, their, the imagery in their head. So it becomes, uh, that becomes a reality of what's inside. And when that is all um, aligned and harmonious, that is when people find this like fulfillment and they find this kind of, joy and happiness and gratitude for life and that's where they um, feel centered and balanced and um, yeah so there's seven principles there and then there's there's loads of other information around values and achievements and contributions and um, character stuff that like w it's in the second mastery um exercise which is called like as you mentioned before it's it's about building that personal mission statement so like it, there'll be nothing that in itself will be something that will be challenging for people because it takes a deep dive into who you are and what's important to you and it, it, it takes time and it takes um space and it takes um quietness 
and it, it mightn't be hard it mightn't be easy for people to um, hit on but you don't want it easy right um, nothing good ever came from easy in your life and putting time and energy and effort into this and patience and commitment will lead to something incredible that is going to guide you through you know the next 10 20 years and then as you go over time you'll probably tweak it when other things become a little bit uh, deprioritized and things you know the the um the game of life the journey of life shows up new insights and new importance to you and maybe some of them will be like linking on to some of these principles um and maybe some of them will be growing new values and uh, prioritizing new values in how you act every day but like this personal mission statement is um is going to the putting the time and the effort into that is going to serve us all incredibly well in the like our it's going to be our our north star i believe that you know that's the term we use in telos you know we never get there but if we keep striving for it it guides us with where we want to go and it's brilliant that you just there like you don't want it easy because like, if you just think about any story you tell people, if you just think about your biggest challenges that you've had, they're the ones that you tell. You don't say, you don't tell people about the easy stuff. Oh, yeah, I rocked up and then this thing happened that was pissy because there's no learning, there's no teachings, there's no value in that. So we know even, and even for myself personally, uh, in terms of what I found my passion in terms of movement, I was in massive amount of shoulder pain for four years. I was depressed. It was awful. I never thought I'd move pain free. But now that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Like it was genuinely the best thing that ever happened to me. It made me explore, maybe find out what I really value in life and what I want to do. And it made me into the person I am today and doing what I am today. And without that, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing what, what, what I'm doing. Like life is getting more comfortable. So do you see these practices? Because let, 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 go back as long as you want, 100 years, 500 years, 1,000 years. As, tr- as tribes, people, etc., we would have rituals, you know, uh, uh, for example, a bar mitzvah, um, in terms of a Jewish person, from a boy to a man. There'd be real rituals in tribes of like, let's go out and hunt and kill, you're now a man, go and These things are kind of missing in modern life now. And I, I really see Telos genuinely as that. I actually see entrepreneurship for myself as that. I had to show up as a man, I had to do things, I have to take responsibility. Like I said, it's all on me. And you kind of live by the sword or die by the sword is that what tell us is like you believe it's a framework that is you know again maybe potentially getting something that isn't there i believe genuinely that what we've what we've created is necessary in today's world it's it's undoubtedly necessary and it is um it's going against the tide you know everyone is looking for easy people are becoming more disconnected with their bodies with nature uh, life is moving faster um, we are more um, lobotomized by fear every day by information that we don't fucking need every day um, and this is a foil to that because this brings us back to what is truly important to us all as individuals um, and this integrates those values and principles that build us our character at the end and that's the thing that's going to be talked about at your funeral nobody's going to talk about the fucking nice car you drove for six years when you lived in dubai nobody gives a fuck it's not important people are going to talk about how you treated them how you made them feel what type of man or woman were you and tell us is a pathway for you to uncover that and then to continue on that journey. So it's a step by step by step. It gives you this clear framework that you can use or not. That is your choice. I mean, we, you have it's one of your great human um, um, values. You have the freedom to choose what you do with it. But we believe that if you choose wisely, um, that you can use this framework to extraordinarily change the course of your life from now and to ca- take it back once again to responsibility because this is genius when uh, you taught me this let's break down what responsibility is responsibility is response and ability so it equals the ability to respond 
that, that's just genius. Like that makes complete sense. So as you mentioned about things that are in your control, things are out of your control, but you have the ability to respond to any situation that is occurring, good, bad, or indifferent in your life right now. Mm, that is your power. That is your freedom as a human that between whatever stimulus be it the most horrendous hideous thing you can imagine and your response is your ability to choose and um, this if people are interested in like literally reading about the most horrendous experience a human could ever endure and how it's Viktor Frankl's book um, A Man's Search for Meaning Viktor Frankl was um, thrown into the concentration camps. He was an Austrian Jew, uh, him and his family, and he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning, and he was also a psychiatrist. And uh, one of his, I suppose, the way he navigated that experience, which, you know, I don't, we can't even imagine what it would have been like. We can't even imagine what they would have gone through or felt. But uh, how he navigated that was, uh, and one of the things that, he uh, he it became very clear to him was that you know he had that he had that ability to choose how he responded to how he was been treated um and that is um when you hit on that when you link to that when you see that um when you train that and become better at that practice or skill um it is like it's eye-opening <laughs> because you start to think like okay i did it here once i did it like i i you know i i could have reacted a certain way but i caught myself and then i had like the self-awareness to steer myself in a different way and then you think oh my god how many times in my life have i been on the other side of that where i haven't caught myself and i've reacted emotionally or poorly um uh, and you, you you start to think oh, it, it just opens up this like different world to you, you know, and, and brings you back that power and freedom and and control. And that book, I, I, I read every single year. I actually haven't read it this year, but especially I always I've read it for the last three years and it, I, I really uh, try to read it when I, I'm in a kind of a bad mental state and kind of let, let life take over me, etc. And then. When you read that book, you're like, what the fuck am I doing here? And I, I think that's the issue just with modern life in general. What we apply this emotion to this thing that in the grand scheme of things is not an issue in any shape or form. But we're so evolved, we're so lost in th- this craziness of life that we aren't stopping. We're not actually realizing our ability to respond in any way we want to. We're not, we don't have to react uh, to a situation because, again, we haven't put the practice in place or we're tying this emotion to uh, to this thing. Like... Because that, that's a practice that I, I don't know where I got that originally from, but like I do purposely try and read about World War Two or about terrible times and you know much much tougher times show history than we have right now, just to show how lucky I am to be living a life like this, and in turn I can now look for hardships in life because I understand the importance of, of, of doing that. Is that something that you is that, is that a practice that you do as well, in terms of like reading about history or you know tougher times? Um, I really go I, like in terms of that book. I was um, drawn to it because of the the learnings, like and and how somebody could navigate that. You nearly want to say positively, like I was like, like and 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 why one person can do that and another person can't do that, or many 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 people can't do that. Like that is just fascinating to me. Like what is that one? What is that one person doing? Um, that nobody else is doing and like huge questions but the guys wrote, written a book um i think you know there is value in that in terms of you can take things from that and reapply them or superimpose them onto your life and um improve it and grow from it um i'm in i mean like to say i'm a huge believer in um self-imposing like voluntary uh, challenging myself is 
probably the understatement of the century. I mean, uh, it's all I've done basically with my adult life. And there's a reason, right? Because the rewards are extraordinary. Like, and, and I, again, coming back to this whole not knowing, but been led by a feeling deep inside me that, you know, you're on the right path with this, you know, keep exploring that. And then like over the, like I said, last five or six years, starting to put some language around it and put some shape around it and, you know, figure, figure out um, what exactly is going on. And, and that has been great. And that has um, entailed a, a lot of kind of reading about, you know, human development and, you um, uh, raising our consciousness and just understanding our mind and you know neuroscience and neuroplasticity and you know just trying to bring in as much information as I can because I'm here I'm sitting here going fuck me you've you know you're you're a happy guy like you're you're very content and you you live in this very kind of peaceful state I mean you've worked fucking hard you've made an ungodly amount of mistakes but you've you've got here you need to share that that's something mm -hmm. that is your duty to share that in some way um, with people because um, that's important that you do that you know because um, you've again you know, someday you're not going to be here but life is going to go on and here's here's an opportunity for you to kind of make a very positive contribution not just to your people closest to you, but a broader community. So I, I see that as a duty. I see that as a, a purpose and um, hence why I delve into, you know, trying to be as kind of accurate with my words around it. Because it's not just, it's just not fair to not give people um, who are interested and who are also searching and also curious um, the, the kind of the best version of my explanation of it. So if I can do that through other people's learnings and put some words on it and put some shape on it uh, by reading the, the, the kind of the books that they've written, well, then I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, like we'll, we'll finish off on this because but in terms of what we're talking about, everything we tell us and why we've built tell us is that we both believe we are firm believers because we've seen it ourselves. We've seen it through others that anybody can get better through the system that's why the system is here is in order to find your purpose in order to be the person you want to be and how do you get better at anything practice like wh why is it though about, about something like this about tell us and, and, and you know finding your purpose and really being the person that deep down you know you want to be why do people believe they're different why can't they get better limiting beliefs I mean, you are you, your beliefs are your behavior. Your beliefs are manifested in your behaviors. So if you believe you can't get better, um, well, then you're never going to get better. If you believe something's going to be hard, well, guess what? It's going to be fucking hard. Um, <laughs> you're you're holding yourself back, and where does that come from? Well, it comes from your conditioning and the way you perceive things, and your I suppose lack of. Um, responsibility that you've taken your subordination to others you know and, and been led by what they tell you great thing that happens through taking responsibility is that you explore with this open-mindedness and you you sense your sensations and you um you take in your perceptions a little bit slower and you don't make these concrete um, understandings of them straight away you just leave them hanging there because you know that like it's just a once off like it might be different next time my perception is based on so many different things in that moment so you know you go back there again and again and then you build this bank of information and all of a sudden guess what you're perceiving things that other people think are really hard differently you're like well it's, not, it's actually not that hard you know um, mm -hmm. and, and that's um once you hit on that understanding, then you start, oh man, you become ravenous for more um, kind of uh, opening of your map of the world, you know, that you see things so much differently all of a sudden and you're not held back. So yeah, perceptions and, and conditioning, of course, is um, the other factor that like you're come, as you grow up, right, you're surrounded by all these other people's opinions, but their opinions and um, uh, their, um, actions are based off their character weaknesses 
So like if you are unfortunate to be surrounded by people who are, you know, for what, you know, whatever way you want to, I don't want to use certain words like, but whatever way they are wired negatively like that, it's very hard for you to um, avoid that and not emulate that and not become patterned and conditioned similarly, unless, you know, you have some taken some sort of responsibility for your own uh, life at that time but as a young person of course you you, you won't have so you you, you are a, a product of of that um, environment um, and you are a product of the are your you do become conditioned by it and the people are who surround it and their beliefs and their actions uh, and their values and you know like I said if, if that is um, placed if they are placed negatively um, well it's going to have consequences for you because we'll just literally now someone's listening to this uh anyone who is, has been invited to tell us a certain criteria in order to actually be invited to take part and be a part of this community but if someone's maybe on the fence or they have been uh, invited in and, and they're hemming and hawing and maybe there's a little bit of fear there what would you say to somebody in order to be like, because look, everything's explained, but in terms of the invitation, if you've received one, you've heard true here that it's not easy work. It's not for everyone. So we believe if you've been invited that you are able to take this work, but there's fear there. What's the question they should ask themselves? Question your resistance. Where is it coming from? Where is the fear coming from? Where is it based you know, what is instigating this um, state that you're like, ah, oh, fuck it, that's not for me, or, you know, clowns, or, you know, whatever whatever way you react to it. Question it. Go deep um, and uncover why you are resisting against this. Now that, you know, it'll look different for everyone, but I think any time you get a bit of resistance in your life or you um, you react a certain way to, um, well, I suppose I'm, I'm not being very clear, it's quite vague, but any, you know, anytime you become fearful or are led that way or have a reaction that is fear-based, I think it's really um, a really powerful thing to do to be self-aware enough to be able to question that resistance. Yeah, because and, and also I mean, like to realize that anyone listening who has potentially has been invited or maybe potentially you would like to join one day, this is not just a three month program. This is not just a once off program. This is a way of living. This is a community that we're building. We have massive plans over the next eighteen months and beyond, um, because uh, we have a huge passion to really build something we believe is quite unique that we want to impact and change an awful lot, lot of lives and really build a community who value this work as much as we do because you can see Damien embodies it. I hope you see that at Movement 101, we embody uh, this message. But just a, a final word, Damien, on responsibility. As you get ready to climb Everest, as you uh, prep yourself for, you know, again, a pretty tough challenge going forward. Responsibility, as you mentioned there, because the, the, we, we often talk about this, that this landscape opens up as you begin to take more responsibility, as you begin to find purpose and meaning it doesn't get easier. You just get better. Is that fair to say? It doesn't get easier. You just get better at dealing with the resistance that comes up. Because there's, if you're on the right path, as I mentioned earlier, and as you mentioned, there will always be resistance internally and externally. You just get better at recognizing it and uh, reverting, you know, your psychology to a place of control. So I often think of it like it's it's nearly almost like when you when you break it down to kind of um, I want to say brass tacks, but when you break it down, it's it's just a, a check an organizational checklist of your the way you think and the way you act, you know. And the more you do it, the more you practice that, the better you get at that um, system. But it, it never really gets easier because um, you're constantly pushing and striving. So then the resistance 
you know, stays or in some cases gets bigger and bigger, but you just become better at recognizing it and dealing with it and reverting to, you know, the steps in place in your psychology. Um, and what I found is that that is a beautiful kind of wiring to pattern because it becomes a, like a default state. So when you are like, you can't, you don't walk around in this hyper-focused state, right? Because you just don't have the uh, capacities to do that. There will have to be time where we switch off. Uh, otherwise it's just not sustainable. Um, so when you, when you revert into that kind of autopilot mode, your mind still has that it's wired that way so like you switch back in really quickly you know into making those if you are challenged in some way uh, to making those um uh redirects psychologically you know so you be, your self-awareness is just so on point uh it's so practice it's so lived it's so kind of um front of mind that you know when it is even in even if you're in default mode or autopilot mode it switches on straight away when there is some sort of resistance and you know that might be unrecognizable otherwise and you deal with it really quickly even without being in that hyper focus to hit you know you're not practicing it as such it's just become your behavior and um your behavior over time kind of leads into your character you know and it just becomes part of your character and that's a very satisfying place to find yourself yeah, that's amazing because as we mentioned about that North Star being a guiding, uh, you know, continuum. It, it, it's not a, a, an end point. We're continue working towards that. We're continue getting better. And something we always say in terms of as we build Move It 101 brand, as we grow as human beings, new levels, new devils. You know, there's always something to work on. There's always things that we are, well, that show up at the right time in order to make sure that we are taking that responsibility, that we're doing the work we need to do. And in turn, we grow as a human being that we claim we, we want to be. Mm, I like that. I've never heard that um, expression before. New levels, new and, levels. It's very and true. That's the, it's the beauty of life, though, because uh, you know, you, you've seen it yourself. I've seen it myself. As, as, as you get through a goal, as you as you reach the target you, you claim that you want, it's like, yeah, cool, let's let's move on. And you move up and you are somewhat better. And all of a sudden there is, there's, it's a new level. So in turn, it's a new, it's a new devil. There's the next boss that you have to get to continue to keep working towards and that's the beauty of life it's the beauty of this community that we're, we are are building and, and around now whenever this episode is out we've either launched the program we've started the community we've, we, we are beginning this practice or we're very very close to beginning it and uh yeah we, we can't wait it's great to have you on board damien this is the start of something beautiful yeah i i i'm like i'm absolutely delighted um to be part of it and excited by it and you kind of Sometimes you feel people need a good fucking shake, like, you know, <laughs> and people should think of tell us uh, as that shake, you know, just to wake them up from the kind of autopilot zombie mode that you can find yourself in like this. This program can like change lives, this um, pathway can completely make what your end is look very differently and that journey and you can and they for can impact lives by living that way you know thinking of cut back to cause and effect um so it's a big thing we're trying to do and we are like putting in the time and the energy to do it as well as we can and i i think those um values and attributes are really going to translate over to what people get out of it yeah well look on that note damien as always it's been a pleasure uh right now you're on everest we hope you're enjoying yourself and uh we'll talk to you again very very soon thanks man thanks a lot appreciate it